Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Look at me making two videos in one week. Um, I am sitting at school right now because it is conference night and we are um, supposed to stay till seven, but luckily Rachel and I knocked out our conferences kind of throughout the day because we do have that extra planning time and they all had to be over the phone anyways. So I kind of have some time and I've been working on my Google Slides for the week, which is how we have been doing the online and in-person learning. But I wanted to share how I've been doing it because I've seen a lot of people post questions online or just kind of post how they're doing it and I wanted to show you guys how I've been handling it. So this year our kids had the option to do remote learning or they could come in and be in the classroom with us and we teach live but our district wanted them to all have the same opportunity which totally makes sense. So. Basically what the teachers are doing are making something and posting it to Google Classroom so that the kids in school are like doing the same thing as the kids at home, which I get it, it makes sense, but it does make it a little bit more difficult because if you wanna do like a worksheet or um, a live Kahoot game or something, it also has to be on the slide somehow for the kids at home to do it. So it has definitely been a struggle and I've been adjusting to it, but I think the way that we're doing it now has been working best and that is we just make a Google slide presentation with, like today's date is October 2nd. So October 2nd, and then everything that they need to do is in a slide. So basically the first slide's like, good morning, today's date is blah, blah, blah. And then any links or anything that they need is in the slide. So they just go through it in order. And I think it's been working out okay. Um, the parents at home did say something about, like when I put worksheets on there, I kind of just like copy and paste them on there. And they're like, well, it's hard to print those out, but I also know that not everyone at home is printing them out, so we're surviving. So this is what my slideshow looks like every day. I literally just make a different copy of it and I change the name, but it says welcome to math and science. I put the date on there and then these are their morning choice links. So if they're not like playing with Play-Doh or something in person, they can click on Prodigy and just play with that. And then these links are kind of fun. They're like little math links. This one is like geo boards and they can make something with these rubber bands. I think it's super cute, they love it. And then the other one is this like pattern shape thing where they can make shapes and designs or whatever. But I showed these in my last YouTube video so won't spend too much time on that. And then I just showed them an agenda. We talk about our school rules. I always put this brain break slide in there just because I want them to be able to click on those at home. but. You can obviously just pull up Go Noodle or YouTube. And then I have a math problem of the day. So this, at school, we do this together in our math notebook, but the kids at home also have their math notebook. And then I, right here, I didn't do this yet. I do this every night. I go home and I record a Screencastify video of me showing them the answer. And then here's our skip counting songs that we've been doing. These are the best. That I got them off of TPT from a Latte Learning. And then they log into Moby Max. This is a little flashcard website. And then usually at the end, it just says, you are finished. Thank you for doing your schoolwork today. And then they have to fill out an exit ticket. And then I just put some tools at the bottom. These are awesome slides with just like math manipulatives and all this online stuff. So this is my Google Classroom. Once they click classwork, it's just a long list of every single day of school so far. I just title it with the date and the day of the week so that they can find it easily. They just click on it and then they click on the slideshow. Not sure why my computer's freaking out right now, but again, it looks the same as the other day. So basically they just go through and do it all. And that's basically it. This is what I was talking about with the worksheets. Like I don't know how to scan that in. I guess I do know how, but it just takes a while. So I just kind of take a picture of it and upload it. So it is more difficult for the kids at home, but I just tell them they can write it down on a whiteboard or on a notebook paper. They don't have to print this worksheet if they don't have a printer. I really love technology so it's kind of been nice to switch over and be able to use the slideshow and it definitely helps me stay on track because I don't have to look at my lesson plans or look at what I had planned next. It's just all on the slide, whatever. When I click next, I know what I'm doing next. But one thing that has been really helpful is my new little toy. It is called a Spotlight Presentation Remote from Logitech and basically what it is is a presentation clicker beautiful look at it it also comes in like this pretty rose gold color but I got the silver one and what you do is you just take out this little USB thing I plug it right into my computer you have to download some software but I already have it on my computer obviously 
And then wherever you are in the room or if you're sitting at your desk, this is just a clicker for the presentation. And my favorite part about it is with this button up here, it's kind of like a highlight feature. So if I want to point to a certain space on the screen or I want to highlight something, I can hold this button down and it shows the kids exactly where it is on the screen because I feel like that's one of the major problems. You know, if you're like, and right here, up at the top, and they're like, where, which, where, what are you looking at? So I'll show you how this works, but it's super cool. So this is my desk. I have my computer sitting here and then it's connected to the smart board. So obviously I can click through with this, but if I'm not sitting at my desk or if I'm walking around the room, um, then I can use my magic little tool here. So you can totally do it at your computer. So if I press the next button, it'll go to the next slide. If I press the back button, it'll go back a slide. But then this little button up here is the coolest part. So if I press it, it just turns into like a spotlight. So if I wanted to be like, this is the title of the slide or whatever, I can point it up here. And I can also point it up at the screen. So I'll go up there and show you that because you don't have to point it at your computer. You can just point it at the screen in general. So boom, if I'm walking around the room and the kids don't know something, I can just point it out. The other coolest part about this is you can actually click on the links. So for example, if these are the morning choice links. So if I was trying to show the students how to get to it, I could highlight it and I'd say this one right here. And then if I click, it actually goes to that link and then I can do it from here and I don't have to walk all the way back to my computer. It has definitely been a different school year and I've learned so much more about technology. I can't even tell you the number of new websites that I've learned how to use this year just because I want the kids to be using fun stuff or I want to keep it engaging and it's hard to do that without hands-on things. Um, some of my favorite ones are Flipgrid. If you haven't used Flipgrid, it is so fun. The kids get to record videos of themselves, which basically is like TikTok, but educational. So I've let my students use their whiteboards and be like the teacher and show problems on there. They love that website. They've loved Prodigy forever. So I guess it's not a new website, but I, I think Prodigy is great because it's academic, but it's also kind of like a video game. Uh, what else? Quizzes. We love quizzes because not only do they have the live feature, but last year when they had the live feature, um, it was kind of like a competition and the kids would get discouraged. But this year they have a self-paced one so or a teacher paced one, I guess. And the question goes up and then I get to control like when we go to the next question. It doesn't matter how quickly you answer it. It only matters if you get it right. So thank you quizzes. Also, all these little math manipulative websites have been super cool. I didn't even know half of these existed. But this website or this little screen is from The Basic Life of Brooke and I follow her on Instagram. She has so many teacher freebies, so go follow her. But all these little like Unifix cubes that are online, like how cute is that? So like the kids could just use these because obviously we're not allowed to hand out real ones. But these things have been super cool and eye-opening because I really just didn't even know some of these existed. These are fraction bars, like what? How cool is that? I have this slide and then I actually have this slide as well, which is another whole little thing of these tens frames, flashcards, uh, the clock, a hundreds chart, all this stuff. But you can find these all over the internet or all over Instagram. People have been making these free things for teachers, but these are super cool. So moral of the story is, am I thriving? No, definitely 100% not, but am I surviving and am I learning a lot and just kind of seeing a new way of teaching? Yes. So I hope everybody else out there is surviving. And if you guys have any cool tech tools or just websites that your kids love, I would love to hear about them so I can try them with my kids. So leave them below in the comments. And also make sure you subscribe to my channel because I'm going to be posting a new blog this week and then I'm gonna turn it into a YouTube video on some fun math activities to do in October because I'll give you a little sneak peek. We already did it even though it's October 1st. We made Fax Family bats and they turned out so cute. I can't wait to hang them in the hallway. It just reminds me of the TikTok or the Vine, I guess. It's like, look at them, look at all the bats or whatever it is. I don't know. But anyway, subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys next time.